Search Buzz Video Recap. Today is Friday, uh, April 24th. It's been about a, um, a few weeks since we did the video recap. I did one last week. I accidentally deleted it. Um, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but I did post text recaps for the past few weeks. Definitely take a look at seoroundtable.com. Go to the categories. Go to Search Buzz Video Recap category. And you'll be able to get all those text recaps. Um, haven't shaved in a while because of a Jewish thing. Hopefully I'll shave tonight. Uh, I apologize for my appearance. Anyway, I figure we'll get right into the news. We have a lot of things to discuss. Um, and thanks for listening to Search Buzz Video Recap. Again, my name is Barry Schwartz, and today is fr Friday, April 24th. I figure we start with the uh, financial news. Google, Yahoo, and Microsoft have all released their Q1 2009 earnings reports. Let's start with Google, who released it first. Um, on April 16th, they released it, and it was the first time they saw a decrease of anything. Um, Google reported revenues of $5.51 billion for the, first, for the quarter ending March 31st. Um, an increase of 6% um, compared to the first quarter of 2008, but a decrease of 3% compared to the fourth quarter of 2008. So they actually decreased in the amount of revenue they earned from this quarter to the last quarter, which was the fourth quarter of 2008. Um, so their revenue was down. We also looked at the uh, earnings of the actual payouts to uh, publishers in the AdSense program and other programs where they pay out you know, partners. Um, from quarter to quarter, and it has been a steady decline since uh, Q3 of 2008. So Q3 2008, they paid out 1.33 billion. Q4 2008, they paid out 1.29 billion, and now Q1 2009, um, they paid out 1.23 billion. Um, so it's been a downward decline for AdSense publishers. Um, Yahoo reported earnings on uh, April 21st of this week. Um, and they also reported, uh, reported pretty bad earnings. Um, I think the earnings were above Wall Street's estimates, but the earnings themselves were pretty horrible. Um, they reported uh, revenues of $1.58 um in the quarter ending March 31st, the first quarter, a decrease of 13% from the first quarter of 2008. Um, so that was a pretty big decline. Um, and also, they also said they're going to go ahead and cut about 5% of their staff again, which is an additional 600, 700 employees. Microsoft report earnings last night, which was April 23rd, um, and it was a pretty bad reporting for them as well. Um, they reported, their, their company posted a net income of $2.98 billion, um, which was down 32% from the $4.4 billion recorded the same period of last year. It was the first time they ever reported a down um, in terms of net income from quarter to quarter, um, from quarter to for the previous quarter. So it's been a pretty bad report for them too. Uh, the market is opened, and let me just check what they're, oh, they're actually up. Microsoft is up about 7% as of about 10.30 a.m. on Friday, so I guess they beat Wall Street estimates, but yet yeah, this is the first time they ever reported um, a net income loss, uh, not loss, but a net income uh, uh, drop in terms of how much money they're earning. Um, their online ad revenue section, which includes search, fell 16% alone. Um, so, so it's quarterly final. Remember Microsoft said the online advertising revenue had plummeted 16% to $521 million due to largely a fall of display ads. Um, we don't know about the search ads specifically, but about the display ads, it fell 16% um, to 5.21 million, which includes display ads and search ads. Danny Sullivan um, had a Q&A back and forth with Google's Matt Cutts about expired domain names and domain transfers. Um, Matt Cutts gave Danny two things that he could quote him on, and let me read them to you. Matt Cutts said, there are some domain transfers, e.g. i.e. genuine purchases of companies, where it can make perfect sense for links to transfer, but at the same time, it wouldn't make sense to transfer the links from expired or effectively expired domain. For example, um, you know, Google and probably all search engines tries to handle links appropriately for domain transfers. He also said the sort of uh, the sort of stuff our systems would be designed to detect uh, would be things some th like someone trying to buy expired domain names or buying domain names just for the links. Um, we've discussed this topic a lot in the past several years, 
Um, so Google went at, um, Danny went ahead and tried to train, I guess, learn and or infer different information from what Matt told him. All right, so let me just quote you some of what Danny said. Danny said, buy expired domain names. Don't expect um, to get any credit. Buying domains and redirecting links, probably you won't get any credit as well. Uh, buying domain name and running a website as usual, you'll probably get the same credit. You'll probably get credit for it. Getting domain names through acquisition, you buy a company, you'll probably get credit. Um, does the domain name registration length matter? Um, I don't think so. So, um, yeah, I don't think so. So that's basically some information about expired domain names and domain transfers. Hopefully this helps you going forward. So far, we still don't have a way to tell Google and Webmaster Tools that we actually purchased a domain name or confirm a val or validate such a purchase. It would be nice to do something like that. It's obviously somewhat challenging for Google to come up with something like that, but it would be cool to see something that allows us to do something like that. On April 21st, I did a post about what does the gray in the Google uh, toolbar page rank mean? And the, you know, when you get a Google toolbar, you have the page rank indicator. What does gray mean? Back in the day, um, there were different colors that meant, meant different things. So white meant page rank not assigned yet. Gray meant page rank it meant a penalty. Most sites that had great page rank back in the day um, had a penalty. And then you had the green of different levels in page rank 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, depending on the level of green in the page rank toolbar. Um, so the, nowadays, I don't think um, that gray in the toolbar um, um, really means anything anymore. In terms of, um, it was about two years ago when the gray in the toolbar actually stopped meaning that the page was uh, penalized. So now we have a fair webmaster world asking um, what does this gray or different colors mean? So one person felt that gray meant that the pages on the complete site doesn't, doesn't have enough total page rank to um, give that one page enough uh, toolbar uh, page rank, so it's gray. Another person thinks that the page is in the supplemental index, and since it's in the supplemental index, it's gray. Some believe that pages with penalties still receive the gray indicator. There's lots of different theories out there. Um, we have a thread, a uh, link to the thread on April 21st, some good discussion about it. Um, it would be nice to get more information about the PageRank toolbar, but again, it's just something that Google uses for marketing purposes. I would not look too much into it. It's just a fun topic to talk about. I hope you guys can hear me. I burnt the top of my tongue, so hopefully uh, it's hard for me to talk. It actually hurts when I say certain words or you know, pronunciation, so um, hopefully it's not so bad. <laughs> Google this week announced Google Profiles is basically a way to verify and update your Google pro your profile. So when somebody does a search on your name in Google, uh, Google could show your name in the search results and hopefully more information just than just your phone number from the phone book information. Um, they could show a bio, they could show a picture, they could show your interest, they can show links to your blog, or whatever it might be. And you could actually verify your listing and update this information. Um, this could be accessed at google.com slash profiles. And if you do a search on your name, sometimes up your pro in the web search up comes these profiles. You can actually see this for coming up if you do a search for Danny Sullivan, it should come up. But I did a how-to post on how to verify your uh, Google profile. Um, and I did it on April 22nd. It's basically a lot of different steps and they include a lot of different things. Uh, first, you have to go to Google Null. It's that, so uh, Null, it's K N O L dot Google dot com. Then you go to your profile settings. Then you click on the name verification tab. Then you choose to either verify by phone or by credit card. By phone, it will call you, ask you to type in a PIN. Um, and by credit card, it will ask you for your credit card information. It won't charge you, it will just ask you for it. Once you verify, then technically your profile is verified on Google. You also can verify your email address. The only way to do that is to have your own domain name, like rustybricks.com or whatever your domain name is. You cannot verify Gmail addresses or Yahoo addresses. They have to be your own domain. Um, to do that, you just go to Google Profile, click on the Edit Profile link. Uh, midway through the page, it says there's a little link to uh, verify domains, and then you can do it over there. Uh, if you more more screenshots and how-tos on that, we have a post on April 22nd. Might make sense for you to go ahead and verify your profile just in case uh, people want to contact you. 
Google also announced two new things in the Labs project. One was timelines, which I'm not going to discuss. It's pretty news. It's go to Google News and you can search for timelines, and it has pretty cool things on how to sort the news in a timeline fashion. But something funny that was released was something called um, similar images um, from Google Image Search. So it's basically you go to similar hyphen images dot Google Labs dot com, and or go to Google Labs dot com, and you can find a link to it there. And basically, you can search for images. Then you can click on below the image, it says similar images. You click on that, it'll show you images similar to the image that you were viewing. So I did some similar images to a funny picture of Danny Sullivan, came back with some funny stuff. If you want to look more information about it, April 21st, we have a post on that. Since August 2007, Microsoft has been sending out weird referral data, meaning data that ends up in your, in your log files that shows up for different queries coming from live search. Um, it's been going on through 2008. Microsoft said they resolved the problem in 2007. It was going on since 2008. January 2008 we reported it. July 2008 we reported it. Now again, April 22nd. For the past few months we reported it, but in the past we just reported about it now on April 22nd. Um, after Jason from Microsoft chimed in and said um, that he apologizes for the inconvenience it's causing and they will work on correcting the issue as soon as possible. Um, as I was preparing for this video cast, Microsoft did a post at the Live Search Webmaster Central blog. Um, MSN bot uh, complaint escalation path. So if you do see this in your log files and you do want to complain, there is a post that just do a search for live search webmaster central blog and there's a post on April 23rd on how to actually report this to Microsoft so they can fix the issue. Um, hopefully they have this under control. Um, it is pretty unusual. I think it's for cloak testing and stuff like that, spam testing. But outside of that, if you have an issue, contact them, they'll fix it. Just a quick note, I found on April 24th that MSN Dude, the official Webmaster Microsoft rep at Webmaster World, um, has confirmed that Google, uh, Microsoft will be coming out with a way for people outside the U.S. to verify their listings, their, their, live, local, their live search local listings and live search maps um, um, with, with the Microsoft department. So right now only U.S. Pay, uh, businesses can verify the listings, but soon, hopefully in the near future, MSN Dude said that they will be able to verify their listings if you're anywhere in the world. Um, starting this week, uh, on April 21st or so, Google began to push the new AdWords interface onto advertisers. So when you log into AdWords um, and you view your, your account, you'll be able to see a little bubble that comes up and on the top right, I think it says new interface beta. You click on that, you can then switch over to the new interface and test it out. Um, there's lots of stuff going on in terms of experimenting with it, and you might want to check it out. In addition, Google base users who use AdWords can actually now send over more enhanced details about their products to Google AdWords so that their um, AdWords results, the actual ads in AdWords, would actually have a plus sign to show uh, products from your website. We did a lot of posts about this in the past about how products were showing up in AdWords ads. So you click on a plus sign, that will come a list of products. Now there's a way from Google Base to actually send your data to um, AdWords in some type of uh, structured fashion. We have a post about that on April 23rd if you want more information. The Google Analytics team announced a new API, a public API that's available to all developers and webmasters who want to use it. For SEOs, it's probably a good uh, way to, for them to get more information uh, dynamically and automatically from Google Analytics so that they can go ahead and dynamically or automatically create new landing pages or new keyword pages that might benefit them in the long run. Um, we have a post about it on April 24th. Uh, there's also a post on Google Analytics blog. Um, and there's also more documentation on this new Analytics API, as well as the new Google Groups with Googlers helping you to use this Google Analytics API. Microsoft has announced on April 22nd at Ad Space, some new conference on textual ads, that they have opened up the content ads, also known as Pub Center. They're basically their AdSense competing product um, to open up more widely. It's still a bit private, still a uh, private beta, but they've opened it more as an open beta where people have to sign up and, it's, and they're accepting more publishers into it. We have links to how to sign up um, on April 22nd at seroundtable.com. Google AdSense has announced a new beta uh, where they're allowing their publishers to filter ads out, exclude ads based on categories. So we, did, we have a post on April 24th about this. Basically, the different categories include cosmetic procedures, dating, drugs, um, get-rich-quick programs, politi politics, religion, ringtones, sexual and reproductive health, sexual suggestions, um, video games, 
and weight loss. Those are the categories that you can exclude. It shows you the categories in your login area. It also shows you how much recent revenue you have earned from such um, ads. This way you don't exclude something that is making a lot of money. A webmaster thread actually complains about this saying that how does each ad get categorized? Is Google doing it automatically or is the advertiser doing it? And some believe based on a comment made by a, Microsoft, a Google rep at AdSpace that a, the advertiser is actually doing it. And if the advertiser is actually categorizing their own ads, maybe they will categorize correctly or just, you know, they might you know, lie about their ads and then it might cause some problems for showing bad ads on your actual website. Anybody of you remember S. Jeeves, the butler? Um, well, he's now back as of uh, April 19th, April 20th. He has decided to come out of retirement in the UK only. So if you use ask.com in the UK, you will be able to see the new butler. He's more 3D, he has a new look. Um, we have some pictures of what he looked like before. But basically, they're trying to bring back the character that a lot of people liked. They're starting with the UK because in the US, they have the NASCAR, car, NASCAR campaign going on. Um, and that's working out well for them. Um, the new Jeeves is supposed to be a, better about asking questions, answering questions, and they're doing all these different campaigns, TV, radio, etc., plus online things with Twitter and Facebook to get people to start enjoying the Jeeves character again. I'm glad he's back. I hope he comes to the U.S. And I don't know if it's going to help Ask.com, but I certainly hope it... Um, I'm so, certainly glad to see the butler back in the U.K., and I do hope it comes back to the U.S. Finally, on April 22nd, it was Earth Day. We have very uh, a nice amount of logos from different search companies. Google had their logo. Um, Yahoo and AOL had an animated logo. Live and S both had very big themes going on on their website. Dogpile had a special logo as well. Creative Site Forums had a logo. And also the Search and Roundtable had logos. If you want to see those logos or the past logos from 2009 to 2004, just check out the post on April 22nd at seroundtable.com. Again, thanks for listening to the Search Buzz Review Recap. My name is Barry Schwartz. It's the Friday, April 24th edition. This is the news we covered at the Search Engine Roundtable, seroundtable.com, over the past week. Again, I'm sorry for my, uh, you know, anything if you can't hear me. Again, I burned my tongue. And hopefully I'll, I'll see you guys next week and everything will be great. And thanks for listening again. Uh, everybody, check out seroundtable.com. Have a great week.